You may remember my next guest from this year's Rosebud Film Festival episode with his entry from his web series. I did a little binge watching and it's very easy to get engrossed in the Malice series. So to get a little more in depth into it, Phil Cook is back on Picture Lock. Phil, welcome to the Thank show. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, it's my pleasure. So as I said, I binged out on this and I... Again, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, one of the things that I really love is how you've created um, just this character who has so many different layers. So, you know, we can skip all the when did you fall in love with film. We already talked about that. Get straight into it. Okay. So in, in terms of creating um, this character, what exactly went into to what was your mindset in terms of writing? Um, Partial is practical. I was trying to come up with uh, a character that I thought would appeal to an internet using audience. And at the time uh, when I started writing the story, my kids were about the age of Alice and her sister. And they were spending a lot of time watching Shane Dawson videos and odd things on YouTube. And I thought, that's the audience. These, these young kids, these young girls are watching. And of course, they liked Buffy the Vampire Slayer and they liked horror and macabre and mysteries. And I thought, that's, I want to make a show that would appeal to them. And uh, the house is the house that we actually shoot the show in. It's mm -hmm. my house. So to some extent, the characters are kind of patterned off of my two girls, except... Uh, did they realize that? Uh, yeah, they <laughs> did, actually. To, to, too much... Uh, well, that's a whole other discussion. But, right. uh, but uh, to a point, you know, the context. But th then they deviate radically. I mean, my house is actually not haunted, and we don't have... <laughs> Ghost boys, and, and uh, you know, we don't keep the machine guns on the kitchen table that often. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Okay. So um, what would you say is uh, one of the most fulfilling um, uh, things about creating the series, as well as the most challenging? Well, I'll start with what's fulfilling. Uh, what I found really intriguing was this idea of condensed storytelling. And where you're trying to do something that normally would take 22 minutes or 40 minutes in, a, in you know, a longer form television, but do it in this sort of much tighter shorthand way in six or seven minutes and make it so compelling because it was going to be watched on the internet where all these distractions coming at you, you know, mm -hmm. Twitter and whatever, <laughs> uh, that I didn't want to give anybody a reason to click off and pause. You know, I wanted it to be really compelling and interesting and a cliffhanger. So you had to see the next one. Right. Uh, so that was really, it was, ex it was fun, it was exciting, can you, and, and I think it, it does work. You can hold an audience and tell a story with some detail. It makes the audience work a little harder for it. Um, so that was cool. And the other part, you know, when I would make features, it would take two or three years to get a feature done. And these, you know, because they're, we would finish an episode and get them out there, you're getting feedback, not that it's changing the direction of the story, because it's not an interactive thing to that extent, but you're getting feedback from your audience. Yeah. And so you're building your audience as, you know, the episodes are going out there. And it's an interactive dialogue, which I never had before. You know, back in the old days when we made a feature, you know, you'd give it to a distribution company and maybe you'd find the reviews two or three mm. years later. Maybe, <laughs> right. you know, you'd find it showing up on, you know, WDCA on TV or on Telemundo. It's like, oh, look, they're on our show because you don't know. <laughs> right. So you're in a vacuum. Right. So, so that ability to interact with people was really exciting. In terms of challenges... Um, it seems like every project I do is a smaller budget than the previous one. This is not by <laughs> choice. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole reason I ended up on uh, doing a web series was because the vehicles that we had done in the past, the way we used to raise money to do independent features, you know, the markets that existed for them were consistently getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And, uh, you know, and I, I had to turn my back on trying to do a theatrical feature. It just was impossible. And, and turn right. my back on trying to get stuff on cable and TV. It just became impossible. You know, and this new thing came out, the web, and this concept of web series. And so we kind of went in that direction. And then, you know, using these, these technologies to do things that in the past were so hard and so expensive to do. When you were shooting film mm -hmm. and editing film and doing all your post-production in film, now you've got these high-quality HD cameras that shoot in low light. And, and embracing these new technologies and embracing the ability to do visual effects, which back, you know, when I was making features before, is really hard to do. Not saying it's not hard now, but with a lot of knowledge and care, you can really do remarkable things. And if anybody, and, and the amount of money we spent on this show is ridiculous. So <laughs> ridiculous, uh, like in a, oh in terms of budget-wise. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're sparing, spending almost nothing on yeah. creating the show, but it looks like there's a lot of money in the show. Right. 
So, so uh, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about uh, as well. Two questions. One, you talked about um, writing and ending the episode with uh, some kind of hook. So I'm wondering, do you write with the hook in mind? Like, uh, do you plot it out? Like, I want to get to, you know, end on this point, and then you write everything backwards. And then uh, I'll ask my que second question after you answer well, that. Well, uh, I, I, I always know the ending. You know, I know how it's going to start, and I know the ending. Mm -hmm. The in-between stuff I'm not so clear on. Uh, and it is a process of discovery because I realize at the end of every six to eight minutes, it's got to have a, oh my gosh, right. moment. I don't necessarily know exactly what those are. They just, you know, it's really weird because after a while when you really get comfortable with your characters, they start telling you what to do. Mm. And it's just kind of, a, I know it sounds a little schizophrenic and weird, but they actually start driving the bus. Right. And, um, you know, this one thing that happens really surprised me. Uh, you're going to interview uh, Katie Benson, her character Caroline. I always knew she was going to be this particular character, but about halfway through the story, all of a sudden I realized there was something I could do with her that surprised even me. It's like, mm. oh my God, what if we did this thing? <laughs> Which will completely like weird people out and completely <laughs> change your perspective on everything that you saw before. And that was not initially in the original story, but then I realized it was a great opportunity to give people... Uh, you know, a WTF moment. Right. Um, so. <laughs> well, that's cool. I, I guess one of the other things is um, there is so much that goes on post-production in regard to you shoot on a green screen. Like you said, you're shooting in the back of your house. And you have uh, this amazing set that looks like it's like a cemetery behind the house and all that kind of stuff. So can you just talk about what it's like? I, we might have talked about this a little bit before, but creating the whole world. Because I think, um, as uh, someone said before, it's just uh, there's a certain level of um, kind of going into this rabbit hole of what is malice. And you just get in, ingrained in it. Well, one of the things I actually do like about the show, it is its own world, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's an odd little world because it's our world, but then all these really weird little things kind of plug into it. Uh, like in this most recent series, we had this creepy barn, which you'd think, oh, how hard can it be to find a barn? Well, in Northern Virginia, believe <laughs> it or not, it's hard to find a barn unless you, know, you have the money to pack everybody up in a vehicle and drive down to Southern right. Virginia and put people up in hotels and feed them for two <laughs> or three days to find a barn that may or may not be right. So we built a barn for the show. And it's, it's, it's a partial set. But, and then, of course, I use visual effects and miniatures to flesh it out. And you haven't gotten to that part yet. But when you do, it's like, whoa. Um, because I needed this barn. It's like a Hitchcock thing. It's got to be perfect. Because the barn becomes a sort of big, ominous thing. It's like, what's going on in the barn? It couldn't just be anybody's crappy little barn. It had to be a barn that was a little, little sketchy. Um, so we built that. And, and so what I try to do with this show is everything that the characters or the actors actually physically involved with is a real piece of space. Mm. You know, it may not be much of a barn, but it's a barn. So, so where the critical stuff, the talking heads, where the real drama is taking place in the face, that's always framed against something real, something that doesn't feel artificial or constrained. It's when we step back a little bit and put it in geographic context, right. that's when the visual effects come into place, and that's sometimes we'll drag out the blue screen or we'll do some sort of you know, set extension or whatever, just to keep it in context. Because once you know where you're at, you don't need that anymore because right. it's all about this. Right, exactly. Um, so. All right, well, I'd love to talk to some of the cast members of the series, so let's take a quick break and then Perfect. we'll bring them on. All right, thanks. <laughs>